It is not generally known that many of the strange and alarming trends observed in this country in recent years were not random occurrences, coincidences, or so-called acts of God, but are, in fact, directly traceable to this group of men, five of the most brilliant and twisted geniuses in America, perhaps in the entire world, living and working together, isolated, protected, and funded by a government contract so brilliantly incomprehensible that no one, even at the highest Washington levels, knew its real activities. This group, in the name of free scientific inquiry, perpetrated a series of scenarios so sinister, so bizarre, and so childishly perverse that rational men argued that the civilization which had come so far in so short a time was finally collapsing. Dr. Carl Becker, director of the Institute. Excuse me, Dr. Becker? Oh, yes? How did the five of you meet? We were all sent out here some years ago by someone who thought it would be a good idea for the best minds to be put together in a good environment with unlimited funds. And what were you all supposed to do? Oh, think. A think tank? What about? The usual, you know, the food shortage, ecology, energy, that sort of thing. We were supposed to save the world. What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. We just got into more interesting material, that's all. More interesting material? Uh, what kind of material? Oh, a little this, a little that. Hunderwasser does all of our media work. Uh, this device allows us to jam all the Nielsen boxes in the country. I see. You're talking about the television rating system. That's right. Uh, we've been doing that for the past six years. We uh, substitute our own information using microwaves from roving vans. Mm. You see that? Total environment control. The entire mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. That sounds impossible. Yeah, well, it's not that difficult. Uh... We pick a show at random and feed a, a winning share into the Nielsen boxes. Like, uh, uh, you got a minute? See? Donnie and Marie, hefty 60 share. Audience of 70 million now. We happen to know that on that night there were only 1,200 people in the entire country who watched that particular show. That's 70 million. <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's right. Uh, the important thing to remember is that Nielsen is totally wrong about everything. Dr. Burundi conceived and worked with the Chinese on the Nixon substitution scenario. The Nixon substitution scenario? Mm -hmm. uh, what was that exactly? The Nixon who went to China in 1972 was not the one we sent back. Fitch Andler, chemistry, biology, and pharmaceuticals. I, I have some things here. Uh, we're into several areas, actually. Viruses, some phage cloning, DNA, 
Crystalline diffraction. Uh, I did the new penicillin-resistant gonorrhea strain a few years ago, remember? It was in all the papers. Nobody could figure it out. And Van Dongen is doing some very nice stuff with genetics and adaptation. Genetically speaking, man is very unstable. He's a sort of an inferior product of nature. Genes are vulnerable to a variety of outside influences, to radiation, chemicals, stress. On the other hand, certain insects, the common roach, for instance, are very resistant to mutation. Now, if we could crossbreed a human with a roach, then we would have a species that could last for, uh, 10 billion years. It is now accepted, as we fit the pieces together, that the entire unpleasantness was the fault of this Becker person, and that the catastrophe found its beginnings, as so many do, in the most casual, innocent remark. In this case, a small article in the New York Times. Good morning, gentlemen. Now, uh, see what you can do with this here. Gallup says that over 60% of Americans now firmly believe that there are extraterrestrials out there somewhere trying to contact us. Oh, great. Yeah, I love it. Anybody? Eric? Aram? We could give them what they want. I think I got one. No, I think I got a good one. What? You're gonna like this. <laughs> uh, what if a spaceship lands, an extraterrestrial steps out? What happens? What is it? What happens? And what is the effect on the population? What is it? Panic? Is it hysteria? Is it depression? Is it mass suicide? Is it war? Is it the end of war? Is it religious revivals? You see what I'm saying? We could find out. How? Fake it. Fake it. Fake it. How? All you need is the right orphan. An orphan? Why do you need an orphan? Because an extraterrestrial, Eric, must not be traceable to Earthborn parents. I like this, Leon. It has texture and scope. <laughs> All right, now we find our orphan. Yeah, right? find our orphan, do a little job on him. Make a few changes here and there, blood, the various fluid. I have a thought about a primal trauma. At the end of all this, the country discovers E.T. has been living right among them all along. Incredible. Let's get Doris in on this. Hello, Doris. Yes, Dr. Becker. How are you, Doris? How am I? I'm perfect, you know that. Let me see what you can find on a white American male mm -hmm. uh, between the ages of 25 and 40, mm -hmm. uh, an orphan whose mm -hmm. parents are untraceable, urban. Just a minute. I'm searching. Yeah, he's coming. I can feel it. How about an assistant professor of psychology, Simon Mendelssohn? He's perfect. Okay, stay with me now, because this is really great. Nuclear rockets, huge ones, hundreds of them on one side of the world. And when the planet runs out of food and air and water, which it will, probably, what do we do? Huh? Anybody? What do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We turn the planet into a spaceship, and we move to another solar system where there is food, and water and air. It can happen. Anything can happen. Dare to dream. Use the right side of your brains, intuition, imagination, dreams, uncertainty. Remember we talked about the uncertainty principle? Well, Heisenberg is predated a thousand years by the Zen poets. A thousand years. You can change the world with an idea. But you have to think of the idea first. Yeah, uh, listen, <laughs> Wittgenstein said, listen to this, I do not know what I do not know. Huh? Is that fantastic? 
I do not know what... Yes, Pam, what is it? Uh, is this going to be on the final? Doris was right, it's perfect. Oh. We're going to need a few personal details from his early childhood. I need fresh samples of his three major bodily fluids. I never heard of a sensory deprivation tank. It's completely safe, Lisa. Stop worrying. What is this? Looks like a coffin. Very good. It's the crate a coffin comes in. I got it from Jerry Epstein's uncle, who drives a hearse for Frankie Campbell's. Simon, I don't want to say anything that isn't totally supportive. Then don't. Except, do you remember what happened last time with the peyote? Nothing happened with the peyote. You threw up for five days. You were dizzy and missed your class. You made sounds like a wolf howling. Three days is a completely normal side effect, and this has nothing to do with that. So I wonder you're going to make one of these wonderful scientific leaps, and I'm not going to be able to catch you. Very nice, very poetic. Do me a favor, hand me the uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Listen, you're a brilliant man. You could make a contribution. What do you want to lie in a, a coffin from Jerry Epstein's uncle? Are you for? kidding me? This is the greatest scientific research tool since the invention of the microscope, Lisa. Since the microscope. <laughs> Says who? Says everybody. Me. N is this your mattress here? Yes, it is. It's a new field, Lisa, and I'm a pioneer. You ever see Faraday's lab, or Fermi's, or Madame Curie's, or the atomic pile at the University of Chicago? Flimsy stuff. It's all jerry-built. All right, listen, what do you want me to do with your red shirt? What? The red shirt that came back mangled from the laundry. Lisa, stop playing house! I'm on the verge here! This is gonna do it for me! Really? Yeah, it's incredible! A guy named John Lilly invented it. Here, look at this. A simple tank filled with water. Get in. You float there, no light, no sound, no feeling of gravity, nothing. The brain is deprived of all sensory input, so it starts to turn in on itself. You get disoriented. You get afraid. You start to panic. Massive anxiety ensues. If you're lucky, you even hallucinate. The brain examining itself, Lisa. I see. Josh, you got it. Great. What is that? It looks electric. Hi, Lisa. EEG. I got it from the primate lab. Simon, you shouldn't steal equipment. Oh, no. Harvey stole cadavers from the cemetery. Harvey Milstein from the economics department? Harvey. Sir William Harvey. Circulation of the blood, 1628. It's a joke, Simon. Lighten up. Lisa, go get a cup of coffee. I don't want a cup of coffee. All right, I'll get a cup of coffee. I'll pick you up later, OK? Yeah. What time? Monday. What do you mean, Monday? This is Thursday. Right. What do you mean, right? You're going to lie in this thing for three days? You will dissolve. I won't dissolve. It's only 80 hours. Simon, I don't want to have to fill out a lot of forms. Do you or do you not want me to win a Nobel Prize? Yes, if you wear that to the ceremony. OK, let's run the list. Stand Simon, by. are you Pump. sure about this Check. thing? Why is Filter. it I'm the last Check. one to know? The Yakamoras are coming to dinner. Sweetie, and, uh, everything's completely under control. Mm -hmm. And I've got a duct of right. frosting in the sink. Okay. Josh, what's the long... Shh. What's the longest anybody ever stayed in one of these things? Robert Wilmer up at Stanford did about 50 hours. 50? He said he's gone to 80. Could be a major breakthrough. Well, what happened to this guy from Stanford? Was he okay? It was the most incredible experience of my life. How long was I in? The full 80? About 63 seconds. 63 seconds? Are you sure? My God, I must be all keyed up. OK, let's try it again. Ooh. Ooh, get the, uh... Don't touch that Ooh. Excuse me. You must be Simon Mendelssohn.
You are, am I right? Yes. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Carl Becker, and I think you may be an authentic genius. I see Umansky is doing some interesting things with neutrinos. I heard from Kirloff. He says he's three months from a unified field theory. <laughs> Poor Kirloff. Always premature. And Misha? Oh. <laughs> Don't even mention Misha. Large Mylar reflectors. About five miles square. Launched from rockets. What? Reflectors in synchronous orbit, 22,000 miles over uh, Nebraska. Why? Uh, 24 hour a day sunlight, right? Oh, yeah. Continuous growing cycle. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. Twice as much corn. Very uh -huh. pretty. Right. Very pretty. Very you should good. make out some equations. All blades. Sir. Um, is it the Latash? It is, sir. The 70. It has a lovely nose. Thank you, sir. Oh, I do, I do so dislike the 68. It's so pushy. Yeah, I hate it. I don't know how to say this, Dr. Becker, but... Carl, please, Carl. All my life, I, 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 I've hoped that maybe someday... And now this, and, and, and you, and, and those guys, my God, they're all so brilliant. And, oh. and, and, and that Indian guy with the Mylar reflectors, <laughs> I couldn't believe Burundi, it. Burundi, he was just showing off. Oh, yeah? For yeah. who? You, of course. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm speechless. Here it is, Simon. What do you think? What do I think? You saw what they gave me at school, that little plaza in the basement? Anything you want, Simon, just requisition it. From a paper clip to a microscope. The only limit is your own imagination. I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I'm without uh, the ability. I can't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm. We know you're going to do some wonderful work. Well, I'll certainly, I'll do every, I'll make, I'll. I'd like to see Taram Patita Babu no Magahatawan. Excuse me. It's all right. It's all... How do you do? Hello. So glad. Cynthia Mallory. Simon Mendelssohn. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, Dr. Mallory is on, is on the staff. Oh, good. And, yeah, has expressed an interest in working with you. Oh, well, that's not, I need, uh, I need somebody with a very eclectic background, a solid foundation, all the sciences, some literature and philosophy. Uh, what's your field? Well, I have an MD from Johns Hopkins, hmm. PhD from Cambridge in behavioral psychology, master's from the Sorbonne in contemporary French literature, oh my God. particularly the absurdist, South oh. Camus. Yes, um, I read uh, many. Uh... My uh, undergraduate work was completed at Swarthmore, two years, summa cum laude. Mon Dieu. Mon... Yes. Oh. I've worked with uh, Kiplinger in uh, Vienna, Olofsson in Stockholm, Epstein in Geneva. Yes. Of course, you're familiar with his work oh. on pineal gland biorhythms and acetyltransferase activity in chickens and rats. Yes, Epstein and, and Epstein. rats. Epstein and rats and chickens. My new book, entitled A Comprehensive History of Oral Sex Techniques Illustrated, has already been proclaimed a masterpiece by both Norman Mailer and Bess Meyerson and has an advanced printing of 100,000 copies. 
Who's your publisher? Knopf. Let's try it out. For, try it out for a week. I'm working on what I call a, a, a general theory of creativity. Really? Just like Albert Einstein? I believe that inside of everybody, everybody is a genius waiting to be released. The secret is you, you got to get yourself into a kind of a chaotic enough mental state. Then the good material can break through from the unconscious. Well, how do you accomplish this? Oh, uh, any way you can. Chemicals, sleep loss, fasting, deep breathing. Did you, did you know that if I hyperventilate for 10 minutes, I really do some very interesting things creatively. Mein Völker ist in alten Biri, gesandt geworden ist ein viel ein Eigenheit. Mein Schwert ist seine Rolle, mein Mäntelkau, pan viele sein Ausspiel. Where you fellas may be wrong, and you'll forgive me if I throw 500 years of science out the window with this. What if it's all subjective? I mean, the universe contains not one truth, but an infinite number of truths, right? Okay. Follow me. Take your, take your black hole, for example. Hmm. Your black hole is popular now, I submit, because what you got out there is a bunch of depressed scientists. You're not going to get any happy, well-adjusted scientists inventing a big object, a black thing that sucks you into a noodle-shaped object five million miles long and eats you up if you get too close to it. Think about it. Hmm? Very good, Sal. Thank you, Blades. Very fruity. How's he doing? Oh, he thinks he's doing just great. Oh, Is he watching right now? He's watching. Mm -hmm. Smile. Is he resisting you? Resisting? Why would he do that? He has the perfect environment, the perfect equipment, the perfect fantasy, the perfect woman. I think we can move ahead swiftly now. The key is death. If you spoke of death a lot, it would make him sexually excited. He's that type. We're drowning in a sea of facts. The left half of the brain is recreating the entire world in its own image. Well, I think that's better than if the liver was recreating the world in its own image or the kidney. Mm. If an organ is going to recreate the world, that's an interesting the world, theory. The that's, the... that's quite brilliant, in fact. How did you get so brilliant? Must run in the family. Oh, yes? Yeah. My father was the most brilliant research physicist on the entire H bomb project. Mm. Until the accident, anyway. Well, what, uh, what accident was that? Well, he was in charge of the final arming of the bomb on Enewetok. Oh, yes. Apparently, he he fell asleep in the tower. No one knew about it. The detonation went off on schedule. You mean? Yes. My father was completely vaporized. God. Do you find this morbid? I certainly do. Please continue. My grandfather was a student under the great radiologist Wilhelm Röntgen in Munich. Oh, yes. Together they discovered that if you place your hand in front of a photographic plate and bombard it with high-intensity x-rays, that you can see the skeleton underneath. Mm-hmm. In 1901, Wilhelm Röntgen got the Nobel Prize. My grandfather's hand dropped off. The little guy always gets the shaft. So true. My husband was a psychiatrist. He specialized in contemporary suicide. Was a psychiatrist? Mm-hmm. One day, he took a bottle of Secanol and jumped off the roof. Oh, my God. He must have suffered terribly. Yeah. I feel that he was probably sleeping by the time he passed the third floor.
you get the fluids? Did you get them? 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 <laughs> Are they fresh? <laughs> fresh. You're a genius. Did you tell the father's story? Yes. And the husband anecdotes? Yes, yes, yes. You yes. see, I designed those anecdotes specifically to excite him, to enthrall him with you. His feelings about me are not based on your little stories, I can assure you. Oh, really? Well, what are they based on, then? Something I do with my tongue. Cynthia, that's disgusting. Yes, that's why it works. Bitch. Pimp. All right, all right, let's just calm down. This should be a beautiful moment. Eric, what are your thoughts? Well, Carl, I think the new tank of his is the key. See, my feeling is what he's searching for during these immersions, although he doesn't know it, is his real mother, the one who abandoned him when he was an orphan. So the next time he gets in the tank, leave him in for 200 hours. That's over a week. His brain's going to turn to tapioca. Oh, I wouldn't think so. It'll just make him very receptive. To what? We're going to give him a whole new birth memory. Has he got a red light and a white light? Good. Sweetheart, you want to check the monitor here? Let's see if the two things are going up and then the two other yeah. things in the lights. Yeah. There's lights going. It's fine. There's a test run, so get me out in an hour, OK? Let's plug in. Terrific. Hood, please. Okay, one second. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Can you read me out there? I hope you're taking good notes out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ABC, hello, hello. Okay. I'm inside the tank. It's very, very interesting. Water temperature is... And he says, no. It's only 197 hours. Go ahead, go What's he doing? He's regressed completely. Regressed to where? Infancy? <laughs> no, farther than that. About 500 million years. Every human brain carries the memory of all evolution. He's been through the entire evolutionary chain. He has to find his way back. Now, see, he's a tiny sea organism. Plankton. What's he doing now? That's a jellyfish. Oh, jellyfish.
And look at that, Carl. We got flippers and fins here. Now he's starting to swim. He's trying to walk erect. Hey, that's Australopithecine. That's Pithecanthropus. Java Man. Homo erectus. Oh, he's discovered his own sexuality. Well, now. Well, well, my hole. Well, my hole. He's inventing language. Look at that, Carl. He's doing a dance of joy to the harvest. <gasps> Too much joy. We get guilt in religion. Becoming civilized. He's become an artisan. He's making objects. He's on an assembly line. It's it's the industrial revolution. bring him up into twilight sleep. He'll observe everything, but it'll pass directly into his deepest memory through his unconscious. Poor lonely Simon. And do you know why you're lonely, Simon? <sighs> because you're an orphan. You don't know who you are <sighs> or where you come from. Open your eyes, Simon. It's July 7, 1938, your first day on Earth. Spaceship, are you in the spaceship? Simon, 
I am the spaceship. Well, you're just a machine. Oh, thank you very much. Some gratitude from a son. How can a human being have a mother who's a machine mother? Simon, our planet is 50 billion years ahead of Earth. We can make humans the way humans make toasters. You made me? What then? You made yourself? No, no! I'm scared! It's all right, little Bobichkins. Don't worry. It's a good recipe. A little protein, some nice amino acids. It'll last for almost 40 years, I guarantee. And then what? And then you fall apart. No! What do you expect, Simon? Nothing lasts forever. Not even a toaster. No, don't! Why are you leaving me? They need help, Simon. I want you to save the world. Save the world? I can't even get a regular checking account, Ma. Goodbye, Simon. No, don't leave me, Ma. Ma, don't leave me. Ma! Don't be frightened. I'm leaving you in front of the orphanage. Goodbye. Don't leave me. Ma, come back, Ma. Something happened. What happened? I don't know. Let's just figure it out logically. Oh, oh, bad dream, oh. Not dreams, Simon, those were memories. Memory? Yes. Don't be frightened, Simon. We're here to help. Help! Search for it. Search. Be who you are. Who I are. Your parents. Mm. Who are they? Where did they come from? Oh! Who are you? Oh! Where do you come from? Oh, I, uh, Simon, the whole world is waiting. Extraordinary. Think of the <coughs> possibilities, the recognition. Yeah, oh, a book. Knopf. Wake up, Simon. <laughs> Who are you, Simon? Wait. Mm -hmm. Who are you? I know. I know. Yes. My mother yes. Uh, made me. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a recipe. Go with it, my, Simon. My mother, a big white one, yes. a thing. Floating yes. halter. Yes. 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 Oh, I am. What are I, you? I, oh, God. I'm yes. a toaster. Yes. 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 I'm a toaster. Oh, I yes. said I can Thank say it. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I feel good now. <laughs> This item from Hanover, Maine. Scientists from a research facility near here reported that they were holding someone who was claiming to be an extraterrestrial. This footage, supplied by station WHKC in Bangor, shows Simon Mendelssohn, a staff member at the Institute for Advanced Concepts, who it is alleged was placed on Earth as an infant approximately 40 years ago. Extensive medical tests are underway to determine if Mr. Mendelssohn is in fact our first visitor from the stars or just a self-styled lunatic, or both. <laughs> Nadie 
acompaña mi soledad, ten piedad de mi pena. It's a distinct possibility. We can make viruses now, an advanced civilization. They could make a perfect human. A real three-dimensional human? A human human? There's a dichotomy in this that... If he's <laughs> indistinguishable from you or me, what is the difference? Where is his soul? This is the basic question. How can the man have a soul? His mother was a blender. The most he can have is a warranty. I, I think that this event is clear proof that there is a God in the universe. This is clear proof there is no God. You're both wrong. This is proof that there is a God, but he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, oh, come no, on. No, no, it's no, no, gentlemen, please, please, please. Good morning, Simon. Ah, Carl, good morning. Good morning. You, uh, you wanted to see us. Yes, I did. I wanted to thank you all personally for the exemplary way in which you have handled what could have been a very explosive situation for you. You should feel very, very proud. Thank you. You see, you've given the world something finally to believe in. Ah, and what is that? Me. Yes. Simon, what's that in your hand? Ah, yes. Uh, my statement. Could we see it? Sure. Uh, to whom do you wish to make this statement? Oh, all mankind. Full media coverage. Could you excuse us for a minute? Surely. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, a new wrinkle. Full media coverage. I love it. What do you think? Well, we can't let him make the statement. Why not? It's already in the scenario. Release it to the media. Why not? Did you read that thing? The man's a world-class psychotic. Uh-huh. You say something? I said, look who's talking. Chemist. Rochophile. Please, gentlemen, I beg of you. I'm a little pressed Simon, for time, Could Carl. you excuse us for yeah, just a I minute just appreciate longer? If you kept it rolling. Thank you. Huh? Look, I, why don't we give it a try? I, uh, what could happen? Aram. Go. Chopin and Shaw. Go. Let's do it. Very Simon, nice, what really? we've decided to and do... What? Carl, I'd like to express my very grave doubts about this. Now, this man is obviously insane. We can't present him to the media at this time. I mean, it's just a... Please stay in light. I think we have a long time to light. Please stay in light, if you will, please. This way, right up. Right up. Right up. Right up. Please. But stay in light. sent here to live among you and the answer is really very simple things here are just not working out very well your jobs are boring your food is bland your water is polluted and your relationships don't work is that not right and the question is how have things come to such a sorry state of affairs I will tell you there is too much bad stuff around Bad food, bad drink, bad art, bad ideas. Everything's all clogged up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all the bad stuff, and that will be a very good beginning. Now, I have your list of things which I'd like written in the Constitution immediately, after which I promise you your lives will be less tense and more rewarding. One, all music in elevators, airports, restaurants, and other public rooms will cease immediately. Two, no more children or animals may be used to sell products. Three, Lawyers who lose cases will go to jail with their clients. Four, no doctor may write a diet book. Any doctor who does will immediately lose his license and become a dentist. Five, I think we don't really need a House of Representatives and a Senate. The Romans didn't have one, so let's just have a Senate, okay? Which reminds me, I think it would be a very good idea from now on all politicians who appeared in public wore a cone-shaped party hat. Not bad, huh? Six, pollution. 
Anybody who owns a factory that makes radioactive waste has to take it home at night with him to his house. Seven, anybody who says I'm trying to get centered, you are invading my space or far out will be fined $50. Make that $100. I feel Simon is basically expressing the unconscious wishes of the public, basically. What are your feelings on that, Senator? I can't go along with that, Dick. I think the fellow's dangerous. slowly because you're going to disturb people you're upset carl i understand these things i just think we should meet and go over your material before you broadcast again no that's quite impossible why because now i have to speak with someone in authority i'm in authority yes carl of course you are yeah. that's why i want you to set up a meeting with the president the chinese premier the pope and walter cronkite I'd like to have him terminated. Terminated? Oh, no. Come on, Carl. Not yet. He's just starting to cook. Couldn't we give it another week? No. He's out of control, and I want him killed. He's not hurting anybody. Have you read the newspapers? Lately? I never read the newspapers. But it's fascinating. His ego is expanding exponentially. Come on, Carl. It's working so well. We haven't had a goodie like this in six months. Please. All right. All right, but we have to slow him down a little. Aram, have you got anything? I've been doing some wonderful things with mice. I know you have. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Where were we? Oh, three before C. I'd like to see Dr. Carl Becker, please. You have an appointment? Uh, do you have a phone in that thing? Please, Lisa, if I may call you Lisa. This whole thing is just as baffling to us as it is to you. Listen, I don't know what you did to that man, but he does not come from out of space. Where is he, please? Well, I'll take you to him, but first you're going to have to change your clothes. What's the matter with my clothes? Germs, Lisa, germs. You don't want to be the cause of his death, now, do you? Well, there he is, Lisa. I hope he remembers you. Simon, you have a visitor. Hello, Simon. Hello, Lisa. They gave me this stuff. They said I was contagious. Yes, human beings are all contagious to me. Oh, is that true? Oh, yes. Oh, that's a very nice sentiment. That must be why you didn't call me for five weeks. Yeah, you must have been afraid that I'd infect you over the telephone. No, no, no. I've just been very, very busy. Busy. Well, Simon, what, what's going on here? What are you doing? This is a, an experiment well, like the tank. You're pretending to be this space person. I don't get it. It's not an experiment. It's the real thing. Are you telling me that you come from out of space? Not out of space. Outer space. Out of space doesn't mean anything. Simon, I find this very hard to accept. Well, you're not the only one. I find it hard to accept myself. But you accept it. Yes, I do. I mean, the, the medical evidence is overwhelming. I mean, my blood, my bodily fluids, nobody's seen anything like them. And my memories, my God, the memories I've been having, and so many other things. It just, it all makes sense when you put it together. It's part of the grand scheme of things. The reason for my being, my purpose, who I am, the all-seeing eye, the yin, the yang. The wah. You understand? Simon, when did you eat last? You know, you have serious troubles with reality, Lisa. Do you know that? I mean, you cut yourself off. I cut myself off. Yes, you off. do. I am not sitting in a glass box with fake air like some half-baked guru. What is this thing, your flying suit? It's my garment. Don't touch it. Simon, you're a real person, a regular person who wears your red hat. 
I am not going to discuss complex scientific ideas with somebody from the music department. Don't patronize me, Simon. I was there during the mescaline and during the fasting for three weeks on grass and earphones. And this is another one. This is the outer space one. Simon, they hypnotized you. Your friend Becker, Mr. Wizard, he washed your brain in a trunk. Nobody hypnotized anybody. I'm the same person I was, except I come from another planet. What planet? Well, how do I know? There's millions of them out there. Is it Venus? No, it's not Venus. If you must know, it's in the Nebula Orion. All right, you come from the Nebula Orion. Yes, I do. How do you know this? How does anybody know anything? What do you mean, how does anybody know anything? How does anybody know anything? What is this, an intergalactic Talmud lesson? I simply asked you, how do you know you come from the Orion Nebula? I can't handle this. I have a lot of problems and a lot of responsibilities. If you don't like who I am, then I don't know what. OK. OK. It's all right. Okay. Okay. All right. Why don't okay. you come sit down over here with me? Why? Simon, it's, it's been a long time, five weeks. Are you crazy? Your body is crawling with millions of deadly microbes. Well, why don't you join them? Because I could die in a second, that's why. Simon, we could all die in a second. The world could explode. Terrible things can happen. Come here. What are you doing? I've never made love with an extraterrestrial before. Lisa. It's it's perfectly all right. I've been completely decontaminated. And anyway, we'll we'll never actually touch, I promise. You can't make love without touching. Well, yes, you can, sort of. Just think about it. You brought a thing from high school? Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Stelzy, Perkitin, Thoracy, Strychnine? Too heavy. I could use those pills to make the mice sound like Louis Armstrong. That might destroy his credibility. Too obvious. I could make his nose drop off. Too Baroque. What do you say to this? Tomorrow morning, he wakes up, and he's very stupid. Right, go on. It's just something I've been working on. It's odorless, colorless, tasteless, untraceable. It attacks the cortex and cuts the intelligence right in half. I like it. It's elegant. How long is it effective? A week, maybe a month, maybe a year. One whiff and they'll both be real docile. You see, it cuts the IQ right in half. Okay, okay, we know. Uh, all right, this one. This one feeds only the sterile room. No, wait, I got it upside down. That one feeds the rest of the building. I'll be right back. Better turn the thing off. I can't. I can't. It's stuck. Oh boy, oh boy. How long does it take to work? How long does what take to work? Doris, what should I do? The gas is drifting around out there. They are going to trace it to me, to us. I know about the gas. I know about everything. I'm the world's smartest computer, right? Yes. So you want me to fix it, is that it, Carl? Yes, Doris. All right, well, why don't you come right out and say it? Well, I already called the Pentagon. I told them there's a little problem with that extraterrestrial of yours. Oh, really? Yes. So you just calm down and let them handle it, okay? Okay, Doris. You see, the gas is worthless anyway. It's gonna wear off in a few weeks. I mean, everybody knows that lithium carbonate becomes very unstable. Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you stepping on me like this? You know why. I don't want to get into a whole thing now, Carl. I mean, I really don't. Not now. It's because you're so smart. Carl. I can't help it. You're so big. I know. You're so beautiful. I know. It makes me crazy. Mm. Carl, don't touch my yellow. You know, Carl, you're a very 
sick person. I love you, Doris. Not my wife, Carl. Please, not. I mean, how many times do we have to go through this? You can't love me. I'm a machine. I know. Maybe this is just infatuation. Call it what you will. Let's run away, Doris. Oh, that's a low blow, Carl. I mean, you know I'm bolted to the floor. What are you doing? You know what I'm doing. Oh, no, don't do that, Carl. I'm really not in the mood. I, I have a headache. I mean, I really do have such a headache, Carl, and you can imagine how enormous the size of that headache is. You know you like it when I stroke your power supply. No, I really don't. That's great. Oh, is that great? No, Carl, I really don't like it. No, I really don't touch that part again. I told you don't. Carl, where are you going now? No, oh, no. Oh. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, Doris. You're sorry? Well, what am I supposed to do? Just give me another minute. Well, I just want you to know that I feel very used right now. Oh, don't breathe on me. <laughs> Simon, it's late for that. My egg. Where's my egg? I don't know. Where do you keep it? No, no, my egg. My egg. I get, I get an egg at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah? Well, where is it? I don't know. I'll find out. Yeah. Okay? Don't panic. And toast. Toast? Of course, toast. I'll get to the bottom of this. Just what the hell is going on around here? This is the Institute for Advanced Concepts. We are a small and non-profit research group. Who the hell are they? They're my staff. <laughs> I'm the director. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Pleasure? I'll give you pleasure, you panty waste egghead. Jesus H. Christ, what a mess. Army, right? You're with the Army. Tell me I'm wrong. Corey, Pentagon. I have authority to establish full command here. What the hell happened? It's a gas. Apparently, whoever breathes it loses about 100 points of IQ. Stupid making gas, isn't it? Makes the enemy stupid. Seems like it. Well, where is he? Where is who? The Martian, for Christ's sake. He did this, didn't he? He did what? Release the gas. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Yes, he did. Very, yes. Who else? It's a goddamn invasion. He's very dangerous. You may have to shoot him. You heard him, Sergeant. Get on it. He's extremely dangerous. Take no prisoners. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Fall in on the double. Simon, there's been a terrible accident. We've got to get out of here very fast. We've got to get, get this stuff. Get terrible gas is escaping. Some kind of very dangerous gas. Lethal. And your friend Becker says it's your fault that you did it. He's got the army here, the whole army. They think you're an invasion. They think you are a Martian invasion, and he's got orders to shoot and kill. Your hat. Where was your hat? Lisa, something wrong? Simon, listen to me. They don't like you here anymore, so they are going to kill you. So we have to get out of here very No, fast. no, no, no. I can't breathe the air. This has got seven deadly germs in it. Oh, no. Hi. Simon! Simon! I knew we shouldn't have had sex. I want the names of those men. Time for names later. You gotta go now.
for this, believe you or me. What are you gonna do? I will wreak my vengeance. Excuse me? I will wreak my vengeance on them. Simon, why are you talking like the Old Testament? They whomsoever shall beat at a plowshare into a bullet, yea, then shall they know the wrath of my wrath. Corinthians 12. Oh, we are in big trouble. You're telling me I shouldn't be breathing. Simon, wake up. There's people out here. Army? No, I don't think so. Don't be frightened. We saw your van. You were sleeping. You look cold. We covered you. See? Polyester filling. And the cover wipes clean with a damp cloth. Available from Remco. Hungry? We have macaroni and cheese casserole. Good. And good for you. Who are you? Why do you guys talk like that? We live here and follow the master. We have seen you on the sacred box. The sacred box? The sacred box with pictures. Oh, television. We do not speak its name. I'll race it to the vans. No, no, no. These are very good people. Does the name Charles Manson mean anything to you? We know you're Simon from outer space. Oh, they know who I am. Bully. We know of all your troubles, but you're safe here. Stay and worship with us. Milty begat Lucy, who begat Mary, who spun off Rhoda, who spun off Phyllis. Amen. And after seven years, Mary was canceled. And after ten years, Lucy was canceled. Yea, even after twelve years, was Uncle Milty canceled. Thus are we all cancelled eventually.
What do you do it for? Well, it's it's a way of atonement. For what? Before I had my nervous breakdown, I was head of programming at the American Broadcasting Company. Hey, come see what's in the back of Simon's van. Oh, my goodness. What? Do you know what you've got here? Oh, uh, what? It's a TV studio. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, uh, you see, it's a, a TV studio on wheels. Huh. It's got, it's got everything, everything you need for broadcasting. Hmm. Oh, whoever designed this was a genius. Let's see, by using the laser directional transmitting antenna, uh, it says you can tap into the carrier wave. Yeah. Huh. Now, if this works, You'll be appearing simultaneously on all three networks. That's more coverage than the president gets. is still at large after his initial gas attack and the injuring of 46 National Guardsmen at the site of his escape, the Institute for Advanced Concepts near Hanover, Maine. In the approximately 24 hours since his disappearance and the release of the gas, virus, or whatever it is, dozens of communities in a direct line between Bangor, Maine, and Boston uh, have suffered strange behavior alterations as the population loses IQ and... Simon, I'm broadcasting to you from a secret location, which is necessary because a terrible thing has occurred. An attempt has been made on my life by the military. Yes. Early yesterday morning, a band of uniformed thugs, lackeys of the degenerate power structure, attacked me in my very sleep. The good and kindly men who helped me find my identity, Dr. Carl Becker and his colleagues, were apparently unable to prevent this despicable and cravenly act. But do not panic. I'm unharmed and I'm in good health. I'll continue these broadcasts every evening at this time so we can keep up our good work. And I promise you that this treachery will not go unpunished. Certain ones shall be smitten, and they know who they are. You deserve justice, you people. Justice and a better way of life. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? Who's in charge around here? Who's responsible for the Hawaiian music in the elevators and the paper band around the bathroom seats in the motels and the billboards that say La Cerveza Schaefer con mucho gusto? Where's your pride? And another thing. I would like now to talk about personal style. From now on, people can wear on their face either long sideburns known as mutton chops or a mustache, but not both. Mutton chops and a mustache look moronic, and they give the country a very, very bad image. Is that what you want? Paintings on velvet? Plastic music and badly thought out facial hair? Ask yourselves, what of the great span of civilization, the drama and the sculpture of the Greeks, the poetry of the Japanese. Tobu ayuno, soko ni kumo, yuku no gare kano. Think about it. Think about it. Why are they keeping these things from you? What of Blake and Verlaine and Giotto and Velasquez? And what of the formula for Orange Julius? The secret white powder that makes it a devilishly good drink. Why is it a secret? I want that formula! Wake up! Start using the right half of your brains. You can move the world with an idea. But you have to think of it first. How the hell did he do that? He must have passed into a carrier wave somehow. I assume he was on the line. Watch it, will you? And get rid of that Brillo. Yeah, it, uh, it looks ridiculous. I assume he was on the line for a full saturation. You see, Hundertwasser had this truck. Speak and English, will you? A lot of people saw it. Mm. it sounds like he was pretty angry at you. Yeah, well, I got a flash for you, Fruithead. I don't give a shit about that. The point is, where is he? Where is he? Well, he could be anywhere. 
We can't triangulate him until he broadcasts again. Weather service, sir. The cloud is beginning to drift towards Washington. He's got us by the Mazumas. Consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes in it. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. We get the 8th Airborne, the 15th Fighters. We do a grid pattern, saturation bombing. No, 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 no. Too random. OK. Missiles, right? ICBMs, MIRVs. You got your Minutemen, your Nikes, your Redstones, what have you. We use Boston as a central target. Level it if we have to. Move outward. See what I'm saying? A deployment. You can't level Boston. It's an American city. If we can take him out, it's a small sacrifice. One city. Well, we just can't let him run amok. I don't see that we have much choice. Why doesn't he just come out and fight like a man? Because he's not a man. He's a thing, a machine. He hasn't got your ordinary human sense of ethics and fair play. I wouldn't want to do anything to get him angry. Why not? An advanced civilization, General, think about it. Who knows what weapons they have? He might even try to explode the sun. Explode the sun? But that's against nature. Hey, you. How are you coming in those coordinates, mister? We've got the position of the van kind of narrowed down, sir. Yeah? It's either in New Jersey or Utah. What is my program, you ask? What is my plan? What is the scheme? I will tell you. From now on, no more portable radios out on the street. Nobody can name their child free, moonbeam, sky, or rain. These are very, very silly names. No member of the government who gets arrested may write a book about it for profit. I want to talk about these guys who pull their car into the intersection before the other side is clear, and then the light changes and the intersection is blocked. Let's get on that right away. $10,000 fine for blocking the intersection. I really hate those guys. I don't want any panic, no fleeing, and no mass evacuation of the populated areas. Remain in your homes. Do not use the telephone. Do not try to communicate with anyone. Breathe as little as possible. Stay close to the ground. Do not panic. Remain tuned to this station. Simon, this is Carl Becker. I urge you, I beseech you, contact me. Let's talk, Simon. Let's communicate. Please call me, Simon, at area code 207-555-8000. When a woman acts the part of a man, she has the following things to do in addition to the nine given above. These, the pair of tongs, the top, and the swing. When the woman holds the lingam in her yoni, 
draws it in, presses it, and keeps it thus in her for a long time. It is called, remember, say, by the, way, the pair of my ugly looking moose head you got on It's a great wonder she wouldn't think of the nails and all the coffins she said. Now at last, I can speak to you, beloved brothers of the absence Arnold. of a tail is eminently distinctive of man. All jazz musicians will agree with you the cards. War and peace by Leo Tolstoy. Part As one, promised, crime well, and punishment well, by who? Do you think you can get away with this? Listen, the people of this world are lucky that I'm in their midst. They are. Huh? Yes, they are. Simon, I want you to eat this. You are very crazy from low blood sugar. No. You've got to eat something. Things look better after coconut. Contamination. Get an egg. No, look. This is machine made. It's untouched by human hands. And what about the air? You know you're breathing that. Yes, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice to rid the world of evil men. The army? I shall smite them! Oh, no, the Bible is... I shall smite them, and they shall be laid low, yea, even unto the dust! <sighs> Simon, maybe you should go back and see Dr. Mednick for a couple of sessions. Mednick? Mednick is a fraud. He told me I was alienated. Of course I'm alienated. I'm an alien. You know, I, I think you're having some kind of nervous breakdown here. And, and you know what, Simon? You're giving one to the entire country. Where are you going now? Are you going to go broadcast now? The initial excitement, even exhilaration, which accompanied the discovery of the alien has now given way to popular unrest and, in higher circles, sober apprehension. Who is this man? Where does he come from? What does he want from us? These and other related questions... Is this your great contribution? Chaos? Well, it takes time to change bad habits. What have you changed? I am taking common clay and I am turning it into earthenware vessels! That will hold things. Land Watch! And non-threatening popular... Hi, kids. Hi, Hi, Simon. All right, I would like you to list for me now four major films by the Russian master Sergei Eisenstein. Ten Days That Shook the World, Alexander Nevsky, Potemkin, and Viva Mexico, a work that is yet unfinished. Yes, and how do you feel about these films? We love them. Yes, and why? Because it's on the sacred box. But you don't love everything that's on the sacred box. Yes. Celebrity bowling? Yes. Badly dramatized English novels? Yes. The uh, commercial for the vegetable slicer at 3 AM? Yes. Everything? Yes. Hmm. You like it when it goes whoo? Yes. You like junk? Yes. Melody, come here. Now, you've been watching Uncle Simon on television, and you've been listening very carefully to what he's been saying, right? So I want you to dig deep into your heart now and tell me the most wonderful, beautiful thing in the entire world. Disco. I don't understand. What? I'm not reaching them, not the real people, not the grassroots. Who are you reaching? Fringes, weirdos, the paper hat crowd. I give my best stuff, too. Shakespeare, Pogo, the prophets. Maybe they don't want their lives improved. You know, maybe they like their lives the way they are. They like that fake music in the elevators? They like those thin gray hamburgers with the imitation sauce? Simon, you just can't show up out of nowhere and tell the whole country what to like. Emptiness, emptiness. 10 billion years of evolution. Up from the slime, for what? They call this a culture. Well, I don't think it's so bad. I think we produce some good things, too. Oh, yeah? Such yeah. as? I don't know. Uh, Fred Astaire, penicillin, air conditioning. You like air conditioning, I know that. I don't like air conditioning. Oh, come on, you love air conditioning. I don't like air conditioning. Are you kidding me? The only man with a studio apartment like air conditioning. has two air conditioners? I hate air conditioning! All right, all right, look it. Well, please, let's just calm down, because I really have some news for you. Well, I have to go make a broadcast. I'll make it quick. You remember Tuesday, I wasn't feeling so hot. I was feeling very queasy. Yeah. So I walked into town, and I went to the drugstore to buy this test. They have these tests you can buy now, and you do it yourself, and it turned out positive. So then I went to the clinic because I had them do a test on me, and theirs was also positive. It confirmed that they're both positive. Right. So yeah. was that you sick or what? No, I'm pregnant. Oh, 
Are you sure? I guess I'm positive. You're not upset? No. I... I felt it was gonna happen sooner or later. Who's the father? Simon, you're the father. No, that's... that's quite impossible. Why? Well, you see, I'm from another part of the galaxy, and we're biologically incompatible. Different species cannot mate because that's the law of the universe. But that's exactly the point. We are not two different species. You've obviously been involved with somebody else, but that's OK. I've been busy. I understand these things. What? Who, somebody from the music department? Mestrin Flume, maybe? How you always you had kind think of a crush that? on him. Nice guy, a little bit effeminate, Simon, but nice Simon, the only person I've ever been involved with is you. Then how do you explain this? You're afraid to face it. Because it would mean you're not special anymore. You're not different from anybody else. You're not a toaster. You're just a regular, ordinary human being. I have to go broadcast. No, now just a minute. Right now, you're going to stand here and you're going to tell me that you believe in your heart that I was unfaithful to you, that I cheated on you. And then I will go away. But you have to say that first, OK? Come on, it's easy. You just say, this is not my child. Can you say that? Can you? Yeah, Corey, what? Just a minute. Hello, Simon. Hello, Carl. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I would like very much to speak to you, Carl. Yes, yeah, of course. What? I think you've made the right decision. I understand. I'll be speaking to you soon, Simon. Thank you. Goodbye. That's it. What? He's depressed and he wants to go home. To New York? No, no. Home. All right, now, gentlemen, I'm going to go away now. Oh. I'm going with General Corey to put Simon on a rocket ship. On a rocket ship. Can That's we go? Right. No, no. You have to stay here. And while I'm gone, I want you to behave. <laughs> What's the matter, Leon? Well, I want to go on the rocket ship. No, doctor, you cannot go on the rocket ship. I'm sorry. Now, while I'm away, I, w I want you to stay out of trouble. Remember where you are, gentlemen. Aram, I want you to be the monitor. What the? Why is he the monitor? So why is he the monitor? Why is he the monitor? I don't understand. Quiet! Quiet! Says who? Says me? Says you. 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 Says You know, for a bunch of brainy guys, you sure are some poor, pathetic bastards. Thank you, sir. See you around the campus. OK, Sergeant, let's go. Move them out. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow.
to NASA. This is the voice of Mission Control. We are T minus 10 minutes to launch and counting. And now, for your listening pleasure, Tony Mazzola and the orchestra. <laughs> Simon, you're only human. Well, this is way too tight. Will you unstrap me? Will you unstrap me? Will you unstrap me at once? Simon, I think you should know that Cynthia did not find you all that exciting. As a matter of fact, Cynthia wasn't even a scientist. She was an unemployed actress, Simon. I just wanted you to know that. I just wanted you to know that. Simon, Simon please. This is Simon speaking. This will be my last communication until after takeoff. Over and out. Ah! Ah! I'll get you for this. I have friends. You pathetic. <laughs> okay, Carl. Keep in touch. T-minus 30 seconds and counting. Please execute full final check at this time. For God's sake, don't do this to me! Eight, seven, six, five, four. and a Viking. Mm. Well, are you going to do it? Are you going to write this book or not? No. No. What I'm going to do is not write a book. He doesn't get. 
Wanna go for a walk? Yeah. And talk about life and philosophy? Huh? Okay. We'll be back in about a week. Ordered to Dr. Yin Ho Tang for his work in genetics. The last, and some say most important prize, the Nobel Prize for Peace will probably go to an American, Simon Mendelssohn, whose efforts a while ago led directly to legislation making it illegal for anyone to replace the towels in a public washroom with a hot air blower, package ketchup in tiny plastic envelopes, or commit any of the petty annoyances which, in the committee's words, were slowly eroding the spirit of a great people. Mr. Mendelssohn believed living in seclusion somewhere here in Canada could not be reached, but the committee feels Thank you. 